If you want to know how to blur the background of your image and add that gorgeous natural looking depth of field the right way in Photoshop CC, then this is definitely the tutorial for you. You know, we love to create beautiful actions, overlays, and brushes to help y'all in Photoshop and edit beautifully. We also like to give out some fun uh, tips, so this uh, tutorial is definitely going to be a fun one that you can play around with in Photoshop. So, um, you know, whatever the reason is that you want to add that depth of field, maybe you didn't capture it right in camera to correctly blur the background, maybe your vision just changed while you're sitting there editing and you're like, oh, I really want to give a nice, uh, a better, more depth of field to this image, or maybe you don't have that particular lens at the moment that creates that, that effect. So uh, I'm going to go over how to do that really easily in Photoshop CC. Okay, so first thing we want to do is duplicate our background layer. I'm going to click on it. Notice I'm in the layers panel. I'm going to drag it down and drop it on this little square with the folded uh, corner right there, that little icon. Okay, so now that it's duplicated, I can get to work, <laughs> which is going to be really simple in this case. I want to make a selection and uh, select the uh, background here. So. I'm going to go to select, and this is a new feature, focus area. Okay, so I have my view mode on white. You can change yours depending on how you like to see your selection. So basically, I'm, I'm actually removing the background from my selection for the moment. Uh, now you can play with your focus range. For some images, I, you never know, usually this is very good at detecting what's in focus and what's not. Some images, I don't have to make any changes. It just gets it, it's got those selections, and I'm good to go. This one, it's not the case. So I, I'm kind of glad because I can show you how to correct the mask and just make it look perfect. So uh, I want to remove the background from my mask. So I'm gonna select this little uh, brush with the minus sign there, and I can make my brush larger and smaller by using the left and right bracket key, and I'm just gonna start um, painting this off. Okay, and it's just gonna take a moment. There we go. Okay, let me just wait for that to load quickly here and then I'll get uh, down here on the bottom, uh, right hand side. Okay, notice it's loading. You can see the little uh, dots going around and around over there. Okay, so now I actually don't have to get right up you know, on the edge. Notice what happens when I let this load next time, how it has that smart radius. And it will just kind of cling to the edges. So I'm gonna stop right there, okay? And keep your eye right on this area. Bam, okay? Notice how it made that smart selection for me. Now the grass looks kind of choppy, but that's absolutely okay. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to, um, prevent it from looking choppy when we add that blur. So let's add, grab the little brush with the plus sign. I noticed that her hair, we kind of need to bring back some of it right over here. And then we're good. Okay. Notice I also have soften edge selected. Now, if you really want to perfect your masking further than this, you can absolutely select um, this option down here, select and mask. And now I can see the background kind of faded um, and make changes as well. Um, I still have my brush, so I can add to the selection, remove the selection. Um, this is basically the, the panel that we had previously, so I don't really use it too often, but you can. I'm going to press OK. Um, now I want to invert my selection, so I'm going to click on Select at the top uh, menu bar and Inverse. There we go. So now we're ready to add the blur. I'm going to go to filter, blur gallery. And we're going to go to tilt shift. Okay, so now I have my little bullseye right here in the middle and I'm just gonna click on it and drag it down. So I'm gonna get a nice fade. Things towards the uh, top of the image is gonna be more blurry 
than what I have down at the bottom. And I can use these little, the lines and the dotted lines to control my fade and I'll play with that here in a moment. So I do wanna fade it so um, that the edges right here on the grass don't look very uh, choppy. So I'm just gonna play with these. Kind of move those lines around. Now let's take a look at the blur. Over here on the right, I can control my blur and make that you know, a lot of times I like to overdo it so I can really get a nice fade here. Again, I don't want that to look choppy. And then it'll help by removing some of the blur as well. Um, also, keep in mind that you want everything on the same focal plane as your subject to also be in uh, focus. So I wouldn't necessarily blur this grass that's right here uh, along the same focus plane. That's why we don't have that selected. Um, so again, I'm just going to play. This is our original no blur. And I'm just going to slowly keep adding some blur until I feel like it's working best with the image. And you can tell how it starts to look fake once you move it way up. So um, definitely keep that in mind when adding the blur to your image. And again, you can create that. Notice how it's fading as I move that up. But everything, this tree is all in the same focal plane, so I don't want to fade it too much or... You, your eye, it's just not going to look right because the top of the tree is going to be blurred and the bottom won't when it should really be on the same focal plane. So um, let's go ahead and press OK. And voila, we're just going to go to select, deselect. And uh, now the, the grass does look a little bit choppy, so I'm just going to add a layer mask real quick by clicking on this little rectangle with the circle in the middle. Grab my brush. Let me make it a soft brush here. That's good. Uh, make sure black is the foreground color. And I'm just gonna bring the brush opacity down to, oh, about 30 something. And I'm just going to brush some of that blur off of the grass so it doesn't look very choppy. Okay, and you can get zoom in really close and make sure that um, it looks perfect. Now, after it's applied, uh, if you're looking at it and you're like, oh, maybe that was a little bit too much blur. I'm kind of thinking that right now <laughs> with this image. I'm not sure. Um, so if you're thinking that, just make sure your layer is still selected. Click on the opacity here in the layers panel and you can still play with the blur. Sometimes it's better to overdo it and then adjust it later on so that looks really nice we were able to add a nice uh, bit of depth of field there so you can play with that and um really it only takes a few minutes in photoshop and sometimes it can make or break your uh vision for that edit so i'm so glad that we were able to share that fun tip with you guys and continue having a blast when editing in photoshop guys